Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to multiply complex numbers. Now, when multiplying complex numbers, it's going to be just like multiplying um, expressions uh, that dealt with numbers and variables. We're going to be applying the same thing. We're going to be applying um, FOIL and as well as applying you know, the distributive property. So in the first case, though, let's just kind of go back through it again to the distributive property. Again, the distributive property states that whenever we have a number or a term or expression outside parentheses, um, that it's going to be multiplied times, the, um, times every single term inside that parenthesis. Okay, so therefore, I'm basically multiplying 2 times 4 as well as 2 times negative 6i. Now, um, you can see here we are multiplying a real number times a complex number. Now, our multiplying complex numbers, it's going to be the same thing. You know, you know how to multiply 2 times 4. We know that answer is going to be 8. Well, how do we multiply 2 times an imaginary number, which would be negative 6i? Well, just like we would multiply um, variable, variable expressions, if I said 2 times uh, negative 6x, we would just multiply the, by the 2 by the coefficient, which would be negative 6, and we'd keep the variable the same. So that would be negative 12x. This is going to be the same thing. We're going to keep the imaginary unit i there and just multiply the 2 times the negative 6, which in this case will give us a negative 12i. Now we're multiplying an imaginary number times a complex number. So again, it's going to be the same thing. Anytime you multiply imaginary times a real, you're just going to multiply our, co our coefficient times a number and leave the imaginary unit. So I have negative 3i times negative 1, which is going to be a positive 3i. Negative 3i times negative 2i. Now I have two imaginary units. So just like I have x times x is x squared, right? Um, I have i times i, which is going to be i squared. Then negative 3 times negative 2 is going to be a positive uh, 6, 6 i squared. Now remember, if i represents our imaginary unit, the square root of negative 1. So i squared, what we've worked on, i squared represents um, just negative 1. So therefore, this is going to be 3i plus 6 times negative 1. So that's 3i. Um, 6 times negative 1 is going to be negative 6. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, though, we always write our imaginary units as a plus bi, right? All complex numbers, I'm sorry, are in the form a plus bi. So therefore, I have to write my real number in front of my imaginary. Well, my imaginary is positive 3i. So to write my final answer, it's going to be negative 6 plus 3i. Because that 3i is positive, right? And you always have to write it in the form a plus bi. This one gets students all the time. The biggest mistake that I see students do is they say, oh, it's 4 squared plus i squared. And that is incorrect. We cannot use the squaring across um, addition or subtraction. 4i squared, 4 plus i squared means 4 plus i times 4 plus i. So what I'm going to do is I am going to be multiplied by FOIL three different ways. Okay, And you can determine whatever way you like. The first way that I'm going to show you how to do this is using um, kind of our FOIL face. So what we do is we multiply the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms. This is something that I taught with my Algebra 1 students. You know, It's just a nice way to connect things. And then you just multiply everything together. So 4 times 4 is 16. i times i is i squared. 4 times i is 4i. 4 times i is 4i. Now, you can see here, I can rewrite i squared as negative 1. And I can combine 4i plus 4i is going to give me 8i. So I have 16 plus negative 1 plus 8i. Then I can combine the 16 plus negative 1 to 15. But I can't combine it with 8i. So therefore, it becomes 15 plus 8i. And that would be my final answer. All right, in the next example here, um, again, I can do FOIL. And if a lot of students just remember FOIL. So what does FOIL represent? FOIL represents first, which I really did over there, um, outer, inner, and then last. Okay. So you could either connect them like I did there to kind of make a little FOIL face. Or you can just write FOIL, a FOIL and then multiply, then kind of write it like this. So therefore, the first terms is going to be 5 times negative 3. Outer is negative i times 2i. Inner is going to be negative i times um, negative 3. And last is going to be 5 times 2i. Now, what I like about this is I kind of visually rewrite everything out. It does take a little bit longer because here I already know, oh, 4 times 4, I'm already connecting them. Well, here, yeah, you can do them in your head, but 
if you want to make mistakes, that's where most students make their mistakes is when they start doing things inside their head. So I like to rewrite everything back out and then go ahead and multiply. So here I have negative 15. Here, negative i times negative 2i is going to be a negative 2i. Here I have a positive 3i. And here I have a positive 10i. Now I'm kind of running out of space here. So I'm going to put the answer up here. So now you can see that I can, that's i squared. Sorry. So remember, negative 2i squared, that i squared can be represented as negative 2 times um, uh, negative 1, right? So therefore, that becomes a positive 2. So therefore, I can combine the negative 15 and the positive 2, right? i squared is negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, OK? So negative 15 plus positive 2 is going to be a negative 13. And then 3i plus 10i is going to be 13i. OK, so that answer goes right there. OK, so I had to put the answer above. Sorry. Um, I wanted to make sure I wrote enough space. And I'll do this in uh, a blue here, um, because my favorite method here is to do the box method. Now, there is a little bit of change here. You see I have now three terms. It's three. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do FOIL first. I'm going to multiply my two binomials first. Now, multiplication represents area. And the best thing I like to do, yes, this is fine. But you can see I kind of ran out of space, right? So it kind of got confusing. This is fine, too. But a lot of times, again, it, you can get confused on where everything goes. So my favorite way to multiply binomials, trinomials, um, monomials times them, all polynomials is to create a box. And I create a box with as many columns and rows as I have terms. And then all I simply do is write one expression up top. So I'll do 2 minus 3i. And I'll do 4 plus 8i. Again, I'm going to hold the 3 to the end. So now I just multiply to find the area of each box. So here I have 8, negative 12i, 16i. And then here I have negative 24i squared. Now again, remember, i squared represents negative 1. So this becomes um, negative 24 times negative 1. Negative 24 times negative 1 is a positive 24. Okay. Um, so then what I want you to notice, though, is here is my imaginary numbers. And then here is my real numbers. So I can combine my imaginary units, and I can combine my real numbers. So 16i plus uh, negative, well, let's add the reals first, because it's real negative. So 8 plus um, 24 is going to be 32. And then 16i minus 12i is going to be plus 4i. Now remember, all of this product is still being multiplied by 3. right? So then, now I have my product here, which is right here. So I combine those again, but it's still multiplied by 3. Now I just distribute multiplying by 3. And then 32 is going to be uh, 64, will be 96. So I have 96 plus 12i. And that's going to be your final answer. All right, now in the last example, you're like, oh my god, not another FOIL, right? Well, fortunately for this, ladies and gentlemen, I noticed that my first two terms are the same. My last two terms are exactly the same. And my, my terms are. Um, alternating. One's positive, one's negative. So if you remember when we were multiplying um, binomials, you should know that this, or factoring even, that this is a sample of a difference of two squares. And when you notice you have a an example of a difference of two squares, all I have to do is multiply my first two and my last two terms because the middle terms are going to uh, cancel out. Or not cancel out, they're going to add to 0. So um, all I'm going to do is do 4 times 4, which is 16. Negative 5i times uh, positive 5i is going to be a negative 25i squared. 16 minus 25 um, times negative 1. 16 plus 25. And therefore, I get 41. a plus bi. There's that answer, that answer, that answer. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you multiply your complex numbers. Thanks.